Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. Let me thank organizers and Tatiana personally for this uh, invitation to come to this wonderful city at a wonderful time to take part of this Congress. I went beyond the original title of this presentation, Generics and Bioanalogs in Oncology, yes or no? I'll start from afar. That's a revolution of the WHO assembly, uh, the global control, cancer control, uh, how to uh, respond to uh, like increasing uh, burden and uh, treatment equality, care. The global cancer control responding to growing burden, rising cost, and inequalities in the uh, healthcare system, especially in low and middle income countries, are not ready, fully ready. The um, current budgetary uh, um, allocations are not sufficient. 60% of all cancer uh, uh, diagnosed in uh, LMIC countries and only 5% of uh, and the global expenditures um, are diverted there. Only 1% of uh, healthcare finance uh, allocated for uh, non NCDs, non contagious diseases. You know, it's expected that uh, the um, uh, costs will keep rising by 10 to 10% a year. Accordingly, this uh, you know, I believe it's a, a World Health Assembly or a WHO suggested three principle reduction of direct cost, improving coverage of population, and uh, supporting care delivery. Basically, the cost of new drugs keep going up. Both clinicians and public health persons have first-hand information. And basically, you know, no allocations are sufficient for this basic therapy. So we can spend everything and we can ask for more resources. As a matter of fact, in real clinical practice, innovative drugs uh, are not prescribed to each and every, as for meek countries, uh, just selected patients are the candidates for this treatment. And the leading experts also touch upon this issue. You know, those are the pictures of three participants of that conference or symposium. Sergei Tulandin, you know, in a red circle. The symposium on title Chemotherapy in 21st Century, Significance and Perspective. And I'm quoting you. If you have no money for the like, basic uh, drugs, the question of extending, further extending armamentarium is not significant. We have to uh, fund the basic first in the normal healthcare system. And basically, this fact was um, discussed by economists. This Kudrin Center. No, basically, he suggested last year uh, co payment. And there was uh, like, an, uh, they released analytic review on healthcare and needed uh, responses to uh, challenges of uh, contemporary times. In this circumstances, generics and bio analog may reduce uh, cost, uh, health related cost, and increase improve access to health care. On one hand, just example number one, the differences in this publication are the differences in the use of monoclonal antibodies in uh, countries with um, limited uh, financial resources. Uh, um, 
situation by analogs that cost less may improve the situation. On the other hand, it's a, I uh, took uh, uh, I've taken a look at the coherent review. Basically, uh, the impact of uh, this um, cost indexation on health outcome. However, the impact on the clinical well, basically, the impact on health outcomes are not known yet because possible um, adverse events have not been taken into consideration. And the prices and the impact of uh, prices on health have not been discussed. Just a financial uh, dimension was discussed. Okay, generics and bioanalogs. What's the difference? Generics and bioanalogs. Is it just a good thing, a benefit or not? Let's take a look at the number of uh, medications. As the pharmacology uh, develops, you know, basically, simple molecules are very different from biologicals. And they cannot be replicated identically. So biotechnical uh, drugs are very different from traditional medications uh, because of their complex structure, because they are derived, derived from uh, living systems. And chemo therapeutic drugs are more stable, plus they struck their structure is heterogeneous. That's why the conclusion was made. You know, ident an identical bowel uh, medication cannot be uh, obtained just by analog. Okay. So is um, producing generic simple? Uh, abroad, that people carry out comparative studies of generics and the brand drugs. Basically, this uh, brand new publications uh, released in 2019 used in the healthcare system of the United States of America. And the analysis of 3.5 million patients have been done. And this analysis showed that in the, the use of generic uh, um, health, you know, um, uh, um, the results comparable to those of uh, uh, treatment with the brand in the hypertension, treating hypertension, depression, etc., but not cancers. And there is such a thing as a yellow book, where generics are divided to two groups, the good generics and bad generics. Good generics would actually prune uh, identity, and generic would uh, that uh, have not been studied properly, but none of the countries uh, took uh, the path of uh, the U.S. Because, you know, the generic, good generics are approved already. And that's a question. If you are in doubt, do not approve them. If you are not in doubt, what was the reason for dividing, you know, generics to good, to the good ones and um, bad ones? You know, it's a disputable issue. So far, no one uh, supported this idea. What's going on in oncology? Well, that's a generics of cisplatin. Well, it was relatively um, um, comparable. And as a matter of fact, toxicity of generic cisplatin was higher. And uh, basically, you know, they are relatively comparable. As for paclitaxel generic, basically, febrile neutral 
Philippines uh, was more significant in uh, generic paclitaxel, despite using colony stimulating factors. And I, I've been recollecting, you know, the study in 2008 carried out in France. Uh, ordered by uh, pharmaceutical company manufacturer manufacturer of the brand drug and basically analysis was done taxotere and the 31 generics from um, countries of asia africa middle east and latin america none of these generic were comparable with um, brand original drug and Basically, uh, amount of active uh, molecules uh, was a bit less, but some generics contain more active cytostatic. Uh, uh, that's why generics are not the same. Of course, the question is about uh, the quality of drugs and GMP standard. So we have to introduce quality control and set up um, a relevant um, uh, production lines. In the Russian Federation, in other domain of healthcare, you know, comparative studies uh, being carried out, uh, translational research. You know, basically, I present defended uh, thesis, uh, candidate of science cases, uh, regional antibiotics for parenteral use, uh, approved for the use in the Iraq. And basically, generic. Uh, uh, different from original drugs um, in, in, in terms of uh, soluble and non-soluble impurities. Uh, you know, there is a list of uh, drugs um, that are not to be used in clinical practice, and they are generics that are superior to uh, original drugs. And the original drugs were named that do not contain uh, the mm, announced uh, amount of uh, uh, active uh, pharmaceutical ingredient. I believe it's a very interesting information. Another domain of healthcare. Again, comparative studies, translational studies are being done. That's a comparison of uh, inalapril in order to achieve target, uh, blood pressure target. 12 original drug, 12 milligram ge generic, 15 milligram, and the second generic, uh, 36.6 milligram, and the triple dose uh, to achieve the same effect. And basically, uh, this information is easily, uh, readily available, uh, but I wasn't able to find something similar in the domain of oncology. And I heard. You know, uh, this uh, presentation made in St. Petersburg on that topic, but that publication, the publication has not been released. Um, in bioanalogs, production is much more complicated as opposed to generic production. Biopharmaceutic is a very sophisticated uh, production. That's a sample of uh, the simplest uh, biopharmaceutic uh, production line. Uh, basically, it's uh, uh, obtaining a protein, uh, growing cells and bioreactor. You know, this all is very costly. Oh, okay, a good bioanalog cannot be cheap. There is a problem here. There are uncomparable copies of biologicals. They are not biologically similar. Basically, you no. Know, their characteristics vary and di are different from the reference drug. Sometimes they are better, sometimes superior or inferior, better or worse. But you know, on the right, on the right side, so those are approved in the European Union. Oftentimes, they modify production process uh, and during 
post registration, but post, as a post marketing research, but it may lead to catastrophic consequences. You know, uh, erythropoietin alpha. It's a new drug, new formulation. As a result, such drug neutralization was reported. And uh, through aplasia, aplasia, um, it, it, again, that was a post marketing uh, findings. And some other factors that, in fact, made an impact on treatment outcomes. Yeah. And even stricter in requirements applied to uh, by similar um, monoclonal antibodies. Well, top region should be scrutinized. FCR region uh, associated with the complement. Uh, it's actually, it's an antibody dependence, uh, cytotoxicity reaction. The, uh, because this uh, reaction can be blocked, and phagocytosis does not work anymore, which affects efficacy of uh, the drug. Uh, glycosylation changing may uh, lead to uh, the difference in the uh, affect the immune function. On just, you know, one residue may make a difference. Fuka's residue. And you see the culture growth. Well, in our routine practice, we do not test this issue. Even though after publications of this paper, uh, it was done. Uh, Post-translational modification may influence upon uh, efficacy of monoclonal antibody. What do we mean by post-translational modification? Change of space uh, shape of the molecule. It's not just the sequence of uh, amin amino acid, but uh, a spacious spacious form, shape. You know, um, there was a lot of work done world, worldwide during past 10 years, you know, in an area of standardization, standardization of bioanalogs. So the uh, steps of uh, bioanalogs development have been uh, segregated, and the important steps of each periods have been uh, described. The requirements for a preclinical trial, lots of documents, reg regulations um, been adopted, including um, assessment of pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. Um, requirements to pharmacodynamics um, um, it was focused and the requirements for clinical trials also have been defined yes these requirements cause some question posts some questions nonetheless it's a you know a gigantic huge step forward compared to the situation several years ago. An important and a, a difficult issue, extrapolation. If a bioanalog is approved, automatically, you know, this indication gets extrapolated to other uh, bioanalog. Whereas, you know, uh, while developing uh, original drugs, each indication should be scrutinized separately. And that's a law. And most, the most important uh, part is about pharmacovigilance. The documents have been developed, you know, like risk management, uh, elucidating on risk management, uh, safety, efficacy, uh, and all on-label indication monitoring of 
a rare adverse event and collection of additional data on immunogenicity if it's necessary and separately uh, that's a recommendation of a European Medical Agency and FDA, Food and Drug Administration. So, and what about now? Maybe let's do voting. Of course, we had to do it uh, at the beginning. Uh, okay, Moabi, sorry for interrupting. Moabi, that vote, it's a matter of paramount importance. Okay, we have to, it's anonymous voting, but nonetheless, what's our attitude to genetic? Moabi, that vote, is it a merit? You know, um, is it a generic availability? Is it a merit? Yes, no. Depend, depends on genera, generic. Depends on the generic. <laughs> People became more kind. <laughs> Mm, possibly we have had, have had more votes for generics because usually medical doctors uh, they are very apprehensive of generics and they do not approve of them. Question two: Whether the situation with generics? Uh, calls for changes. Yes. Yeah or nay or abstained. Generally people are for changes in the industry. Uh, some of them think that 4.5% think it's okay. Might be we have here representatives of pharmaceutical companies. What? Mm. What uh, monoclonal antibody drug will you choose? A Original or biological? Uh, similar biologically with uh, proven effect, but much cheaper. And uh, the last, the available one, at least. It is close at hand, and we can start immediately. Question four. Have you met with any undesirable effects when using bioanalogs of monoclonal antibodies? So, at least more than 50% of our audience had problems with monoclonal antibody drugs. Have you reported any undesirable effects? Yes. No, but next time I will report. And three forty seven. Not do not think. Uh, working. 
Yes, easy pass. Oh, um, what can change? And practically, thirty-three uh, percent have never reported. Uh, and do not plan to do that in the future because the procedure itself is too sophisticated. The international community, when the first genetic monoclonal antibody appeared, they viewed it as a very positive factor. Uh, the uh, tried that biologically similar products and they said that biologically similar materials and drugs they are the most important uh, event in the pharma market. Uh, the results of their tests were shown on a big screen and the comparison was made between two generics, one uh, foreign made and the other Russian made. The tests and trials show that this way the targeted therapy has become better accessible for the patients in Russia than before. The data was supplied by the independent company, uh, which usually uh, at the prior to uh, working, they go through testing on their compatibility with the GMP standards. However, the process of certification uh, by the original manufacturer requires quite a lot of man hours. In fact, 544, uh, there were 15. And uh, this uh, research, by the way, uh, was financed by the company itself uh, in Russia. And uh, I often believe uh, just like treating patients with colorectal cancer using the biologically similar drug. Let us expect, let us wait for the results uh, of this test, but uh, hopefully the medication will uh, require more experience and effort to launch it into commercial production. Still, there is no information of the Russian Federation about the companies who have who have started the new production of genetics. 
Uh, some people now say that it is also uh, 17 in the world, 17 companies. But let us hope that the situation is not that awful. On the 14th of June 2019, I received the last confirmation uh, that the FDA has uh, passed uh, another monoclonal antibody generic drug and next what we will have to do is to start with the quality control and the last one uh, we have now a paper and we have in fact legal basis which will bring us to the mainstream expand the availability of uh, the genetic drugs and improve the health of our patients. We have one question. Your own opinion, uh, what do you think about uh, generic drugs, domestic generic drugs? I would uh, help perhaps for the whole cycle of the biosimilar drug. It can even be better than the demanding first sex. However, the process is very uh, irritated by the attempts of everyone to control it. 